Okay, hello everyone. So today I'll be doing a review on War Thunder naval battles for the IJN Huga battleship, which you see right here. And this ship was first uh, laid down in May 6th of 1915, so during World War One. So it was a ship. So the design is uniquely World War One. And um, it was launched in January 27th of 1917. And uh, it was put into service, or had um, actually got its crew, and it was uh, in service or commissioned in April 30th of 1918. And basically, um, it did. It was it was um, damaged severely damaged during the end of World War um, Two, but it wasn't sunk completely. So it was so badly damaged that uh, the crew abandoned it, and so after the war, it was just scrapped like most uh, warships or Japanese uh, Imperial Navy warships. So let's take a look at the ship itself. So the ship has six 21 inch um, Vickers, 14 inch 45 caliber guns. So the guns are made by, well, it was a, it's a licensed copy of a Victor, Vickers 14 inch 45 caliber gun built by a, um, well, the ship was built by Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. And the guns are licensed built pickers. 14 inch howitzer, naval guns, and um, it's got. Um, It's got, in addition to that, it's got 20 140 millimeter cannons and only six 7.72 millimeter Lewis machine guns for anti aircraft defense, which is not adequate at all for World War II, which makes it very vulnerable for against uh, aircraft. let's take a closer look at the main guns and the main guns are basically the main uh, weapons weapon systems for this uh, ship because the torpedoes definitely aren't any good on this thing they have us the torpedo have a maximum velocity of only 50 kilometers an hour which is pretty slow and a range of only eight kilometers But you got 30 of them you could launch definitely launch them during battle so here's the torpedo launchers there's two on each side so this is the first two and there's two on the other broad side and you really can't aim them um, it would you would have to aim it like uh, a bright uh, the cannons on a broadside of a ship of the line or something so they can't be aimed unless you just move the entire um, entire ship so the main guns have a range of um, about 35 kilometers these 14 inch shells can have a maximum range of 40 35 kilometers that's a that's a pretty long range let's see how many miles 35 kilometers is actually <clears throat> that's about 21.7 miles that's a pretty long range and each shell from these guns 
weigh about 673 kilograms or about 1485 pounds so each shell weighs more than a refrigerator so you could lob a shell 35 kilometers 21 miles the gun itself weighs about 86 tons each gun that is like this the guns are massively heavy but they only have a rate of fire of one round every 30 seconds or two rounds a minute so um, in one minute you could lay about you could fire about 24 shells from all of the guns if you're firing all the guns from a broadside point of view it's got a massive amount of firepower and it has a lot of horsepower as well in the engines so it's got four engines uh, producing about 45,000 horsepower and the secondary armaments are these uh, 140 millimeter guns which are on the broadside like this five six seven eight nine and ten Let's see how many you got here Let's see how many all together um says you have twenty one hundred forty inch guns okay So I guess you got 10 on each broadside. So the way that I use this ship is like this. You got one on the top, so you got 10. So 8, 9, and 10. Definitely has a lot of secondary firepower. And you would use this when your main guns are loading. So the way I use it is I fire these first. And then I wait and I switch to the secondary guns and fire these, which has a much higher rate of fire. The rate of fire for the secondary guns is one round every six seconds or 60 or 10 rounds a minute. So there's the elevator for the main guns. The ammunition is stored on the bottom or below the bow of the ship below the water line which is a good place to store ammo of course and the type of fuel that this ship uses is coal so it's using steam power like like most ships of uh, World War One and the design is very uniquely uh, World War One in in the way that the ship appears it looks very antiquated just compare that to a more modern ship like the Magami and this ship does not have any radars but it does have a range, a range finder right there. Yeah, I don't think the, the Japanese had radars or used radars in the early part of World War II, but they did use it later on. But the Allied ships used radars, most of them did, early in the war. But the Japanese did not. Um, the ship is um, has a maximum speed of 40 kilometers an hour. I haven't really upgraded this ship fully. This, these are the only two upgrades, three upgrades that I have. The dry dock, tool set, fire protection. 
But if I get the other upgrades, I'm pretty sure I can get the ship to move a little bit faster, maybe up to 47 kilometers when I get all the upgrades. Okay, so now let's do a test with this ship. And another thing to take in mind is that this ship is very expensive. So if you lose it, that's 52,170 lions you're going to lose for each ship. So uh, you better sink a lot of enemy ships to recoup you know, the losses or try not to lose the ship at all if you get into battle, you know. As for the armor for the ship, it is very heavily armored. You got armor here, a lot of armor in the mid section of the ship. So if you get here, hit here with a torpedo, you're probably going to survive and it's not going to be damaged a lot. Your ship's not going to receive a lot of damage. So, and this ship is very vulnerable to torpedoes because it's so slow and it's it doesn't maneuver very well because it's so heavy, you know. So if you do see torpedoes, try to get hit here. And there's another there's another uh, layer of armor. Well, actually, the armor is here. On top of that, you have 199 millimeters. And on the bottom, where the torpedoes would hit, you have 299 millimeters, which is a lot. The deck armor isn't as good. So if you get hit on the top of the ship, there's no armor here on this side. There's no armor here and there. So the armor is all near the midsection of the ship. Got about 44 millimeters of deck armor. And on the bottom layer of that, you have 32 millimeters of anti fragmentation armor. And the turrets of this, these guns are pretty heavily armored. And about 203 near the back front panel of the gun is 305 millimeters. The top is only 115 millimeters. So if you're if the enemy shells are landing like at a high angle, then your ship's gonna get damaged. But if they try to hit here, it's not gonna do very much. Especially if you're going up against ships like uh, destroyers and cruisers and stuff like that. If you're going up against other battleships, it'll probably penetrate any part of this ship. Okay, let's do a test. All gunners, hold your fire. So I'm going to press Alt 2 to switch to my secondary weapons. This ship definitely maneuvers like a brick. Aircraft. So when you use this ship, you want to get behind like a, an island or something, like get behind something like that, and then sh and then start pounding away. Because uh, if you get hit by a couple of torpedoes, your ship is just when it gets sunk or just messed up. And then I will switch to the secondary guns like that, and then start shooting. I could get a good five salvos out of this before my main gun reloads and is ready. Okay, now, now I would just switch to my main guns and lay another. Done. 
So no radars on this ship at all. It's got a coincidence rangefinder on it. Or rangefinders. anti-aircraft gun system on this ship is like I said just machine guns it's like seven machine guns rifle caliber machine guns this is definitely not enough not enough to do anything so if you want to survive in this ship just stay near like other ships There's ships that have good anti-aircraft gun systems on them. The enemy ship sank. Well, the problem with all big ships is they don't they don't really they got a very long turn radius. This could be um, a cargo ship. Which weighs uh, probably maybe uh, 50,000 to 100,000 tons, you know. Since they're so heavy, they, they can't really maneuver very well, obviously, compared to a ship that isn't as heavy. Like a destroyer is not going to have better maneuverability than a uh, cruiser. And a cruiser is definitely going to have better maneuverability than a battleship or a battle cruiser so if you want to change the direction of your broadside it takes a long time I mean these guns turn very slowly I'm trying to turn my gun to the other broadside and it's taken a while So you can press E to tell your crew what to uh, target, like uh, aircraft ships, or just aircraft, or don't target anything at all like that. Okay. Just gonna wait until all my guns can train on that target. Now it's all ready. The enemy ship sight. See, that didn't take very long at all using the main guns. I just... Just whomp that guy just like that. As for the torpedoes... Aircraft. See, I just press Q. There's, there's one launcher right there. 
as you can see, I got to turn the whole ship around to use it. One, I launch one, two. And the torpedoes can reload also from either side. Oh, there's a battleship there. Well, let's take him out. Didn't see that before. I'm well within range. It's about nine kilometers. Let's try that. Obviously my six inch guns aren't going to do anything to that, but I'm just going to fire it anyways, and I would do that in the actual battle. Even if it doesn't do much, it's better than not shooting at it. Let's see if my main guns are ready here, okay, fire. I guess the main guns really did it. That also didn't take very long at all. So before aircraft carriers were uh, developed and put into service, the battleship was that was the queen of the seas. Basically, it was the best capital ship in any navy. But when we're, when but then when uh, aircraft carriers came out um, I guess there was a demonstration of an air aircraft from an aircraft carrier sinking a battleship and uh, that demonstrated that uh, the aircraft carrier was a more potent weapon than the battleship basically because um, aircraft have much longer range than uh, than the main guns of a battleship, of course. Aircraft may have a range of hundreds of miles versus a battleship, which has a range of maybe, the guns on it have a range of maybe 25 kilometers to maybe 40 kilometers in range. So that's the thing. So now, okay, now let's play the Huga. The shells on this gun haven't been upgraded and these are the shells that you get with it so the penetration is okay but if you get the upgraded versions it's definitely just much better. So This is the ideal environment to use a ship like this where, where there's many little islands you could hide behind one. Attacking. 
to win on the attack, it's best to attack like from this angle, like going straight at a target, opposed to shooting at a broadside, because uh, like I said, you're vulnerable to torpedoes. Try to get a broadside so I can aim more guns on the, put more guns on target. I got all the guns on target. Okay, the main batteries are ready. Slowing down, so I guess I aim ahead. The enemy ship that guy's dead. That Turn my ship around. Damn, there's torpedoes right there. I can see that. Like I said, it's very vulnerable to torpedoes. Let me put out the fire quickly. So I'll use another backup ship. You, my, you are gonna go down. I 
is if you have an upgraded ship, it would be a little bit better. To be able to turn faster, which is definitely a problem with this ship. Okay, I hit that guy. Just changing directions, huh? That guy's crippled. It's not going to be able to do anything now. Launching an attack. Okay, he's dead. The only thing I better watch out is for aircraft. Bastards coming at me. That's not good. <laughs> Try to take it out. My six inch guns. Boat. 
those things are dangerous. As for the Hyuga, they did upgrade the ship um, later on. It was turned into a hybrid um, aircraft carrier. And that ship basically could carry about up to 20 float planes. Basically. And it definitely did have better anti-aircraft armaments on it. it had like 10 twin or about twen 10 twin 25 millimeter cannons 20 auto cannons had a 127 millimeter um, guns eight of them twin turrets four twin turrets and the same, um, it has it still had this 14 inch, 14 uh, centimeter, 140 millimeter guns on the side, except it had only 16, so eight on each side. And the same, um, it only had a six. Well, it had the same amount of uh, guns as well. That would be the reconstruction one, not the hybrid carrier. Same amount of uh, main gun turrets. So they added some anti-aircraft guns. And some other armaments. The hybrid carrier... It had less turrets. It had four twin 14-inch turrets. had a lot of anti-aircraft guns on it, about um, 31 triple 25 millimeter anti-aircraft guns and it carried about two, 22 float planes with two catapults it's pretty good I guess I don't know, the float planes definitely couldn't be used as a fighters or anything. They're probably used more for reconnaissance. We need to put more pressure on the enemy. 
That looks like a big juicy target. That'd be a long shot trying to take it out with my naval guns. I think he's coming right at me. He's coming at me all right. Ah, definitely very vulnerable against aircraft. <laughs> really can't do anything against it. Should have stayed near uh, other ships. I definitely lost money here. Only earned about twelve thousand credits. The ship cost lose the cost of losing a ship was fifty two thousand one hundred seventy so I lost quite a bit very expensive to use a ship very expensive so I lost about forty thousand silver lines using this ship so uh, yeah so I guess I'm just, I'm just gonna buy all the upgrades for this ship because it takes so long to get it. It's painstaking. This ship's so slow and it's, so, it's just so vulnerable. Can't keep up with the other ship. Ship, so that's the problem. So, yeah, if you have an upgraded version of the ship, it would be better. Definitely, your chances of surviving would be better. So. This is the best, one of the best ships for the Imperial Japanese Navy. And the next best ship is a Setsu. And this ship also doesn't have a lot of anti-aircraft guns, so it's pretty vulnerable. The aircraft and torpedo boats, and torpedoes in general. So anyways, thanks for watching my Ace 1000KS.